Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and in this one I'm going to go over part two of the song Uncertain Future. So last time I went over the guitars and the piano, and this time I'm going to be going over all the synth stuff. So all the synthesis stuff I did in this song was all using M Sound Factory. So I'll show you how I did it, so let's get started. Uh, the first one I'll show you, I'll just go from left to right I guess. Uh, the first plucks, you hear this going all the way throughout the song. And this one, I have M cabinet on here for no reason. I don't know what. I think I had a good idea, and then I just completely forgot about it and left it on there. But <laughs> you don't have to do that. I don't know why I did. Uh, but anyways, what I used here... Ooh, I'll make it bigger so you can see it. Was this FM plucker. And this is actually made by a, a genius, which you can see down here. And it should be available now in M Sound Factory. You can check it out. And it's an easy way to make plucks with FM synthesis. I use the preset Glock and something, which I also made, and it sounds like this. Okay, and so what's happening there is you see this XY pad, it's actually moving up so it's getting brighter over time. So instead of doing a like filter sweep, I'm just increasing the amount of FM with this, which is really useful. I'm also doing a slight pitch drop here and that's what gives it that really punchy sound. Uh, so I wanted that in there, it's just arpeggiating things. Uh, I have an arp here, set like this, just the up and down settings, very basic, going two octaves. So it's really easy to get something in there and Actually, I won't go in order. So on top of that, it's going into the reverb, which I showed before, but I'll show it again in case you missed the last one. So it's just this, this medium hall preset. Sounds pretty nice. And also in that beginning, another thing I have going besides the plucks is I have a crystal pad, which goes throughout the song. So I wanted this on there because I just wanted something in the background. Sometimes you need something just to give the chords in there, but you don't want it to stand out. It's, you know, just kind of for a flavor, ambiance. So for this one, I'm using Crystal Pad here. This is also a preset I made, uh, or say a device I made, and I'm using the preset Galaxy here. It sounds like this. So this is just there to be in the background and, you know, in the sparse parts of the beginning, just to give it some, like, harmony besides the plucks and the piano. Um, you can see here for this one, I used some chorusing on there, some reverb, and I cut out a lot of the low end because I didn't want this to interfere with the piano or the uh, plucks or especially not any of, like, the bass parts. So I really high-passed it there, and I boosted the treble a little bit, and also doing a little bit of compression. And the basis of this is just a wavetable synth, so I'm just sweeping through a wavetable slowly. Actually, between two wavetables here. Uh, so you can play with that if you want. That's also available now in M Sound Factory, this device, if you want to play with that. Oh, I should probably go over the first plucks effect, shouldn't I? So the first FM plucker I had, the effects I'm using are just delay, reverb, an eighth note delay. I'm using a ping pong. So it's going back and forth. And just a little bit of EQ here. I'm using a high pass and a low pass and a little bit of compression. So that's the uh, two big things here with the crystal pad and the Plux 1. Uh, Plux 2. This doesn't happen all the way through the song. It just happens at one small point. Somebody asked me about this and like, what is that? It was like a bell or something. And it's actually not. Uh... This one actually doesn't come from a pluck. This comes from FM pad. And you're thinking, hey, what, what are you talking about? This is a pad. But if you hear it, you'll kind of get what I mean. So it sounds like this. So this one is actually a pad sound, uh, but the reason it has that rhythmic interest is because in here I have a rhythmic gate, and so it can if I turn it off, you'll hear just the pad like this. But with this on, it creates uh, like a trance gate effect like this. So 
So I called this one entranced. Uh, obviously, you can go and change it. I have lots of different patterns, like from simple patterns like this. Uh, here's 16th notes, 8th notes, but also some syncopations like this. Or this. Or this. Yeah, I just like syncopation one, but there's a bunch of other things. I could even do this uh, speed up if I wanted. That's kind of interesting too, but actually I probably should use that someplace else, like a build up or something, but you get the idea. There's lots of things you can do with that. So you don't just have to have that rhythm. You can do other things with this rhythm. So I really like uh, this synth for... Uh, FM pad sounds. So subtractive synth sounds sound great sometimes, but sometimes you just want something like a FM pad. It sounds sometimes a little bit more harsh or otherworldly. So that's what I was going for with this. Uh, next one, let me go for it. Oh, I should go over this. I showed this in another video. I think I did a whole video about it, this reset glissando. And this should be available in there. But uh, basically, I'll just show what I have here. It's a reset gl glissando going up. So it's just working as a riser here. I have extra voices, one an octave up, one an octave down, and it's on a saw wave instead of the normal uh, sine wave, I guess. And it's going over eight bars like this. Oh, and also has some effects on it here. You can see the chorusing, reverb, and EQ here. So let's hear that. So it's not much, in the context of the song, you can barely hear it, but you kind of feel it. So it kind of ramps things up. So I really like that. Um, I used a few like impacts here, but I, th where did I get those from? I don't even remember. Uh, but those are just kind of other things in there. Cause sometimes I wanted some big like splash sounds like uh, this. I forgot if I got those. I might have got those from M Drummer, or I might have made those. I, I kind of forget sometimes. Forget what I'm doing. Sorry about that. Um, the next thing I should go over is here, which there's actually nothing here. But what I did is this is actually a riser maker. So this one is one of the uh, ones I didn't make, but this is a device called Rise and Fall. And with this, you can actually make your own risers and things. So people are asking, like, oh, where'd you get the risers from? It just all came from there. So one of the problems is I can't switch presets with this, so I just put it in here, and then I bounced it, and then put it on another track called Risers here, which I'll let you hear. So here are the risers that came from that device. First one here. Okay. That was more of a downer, actually. Sorry. Uh, is this a riser or a downer? I forget. that uh, this one may be similar. Is there another one? Yeah, I think that was a copy. Some of the other ones, I think, are all copies of the other ones. I don't know. Maybe this one's not. Let's hear this last one. If I can. Where is it? So these are just subtle effects to add something and add some movement uh, between the different sections. So check out this uh, device here. It's really cool and you make lots of things with it. And I'm actually working on my own device for risers too, that it's a little bit different from this, but uh, you can check them both out. So it's really easy and fast to make risers or uh, downers, I guess. I don't know, is that what you can call them? So that's what I use for that. Uh, moving on, there, I think there's one or two more. Oh, the wobble pad. So this one I actually used a bunch of effects on. So let's see here, wobble pad. This one I had to make from scratch because I couldn't find anything in M Drummer that was really suited for what I needed. So basically what I have here is I used 
an oscillator with a super saw here. So I'm using 10 voices here. And then have some white noise, or actually pink noise. And then I use the ratio. And I'm using the noise just because I want more high end on the super saw. And then I use another oscillator, an octave down with a saw wave. Not saw wave, square wave, sorry. And I have the ratio down there. And I'll let you hear. This is only playing during the chorus also, I should say. It's just normal like wobble pad. And, uh, oh, I should also say the filter. The filter is very important. So here I have a filter. It's just a low pass 12. And then I'm using the LFO, but I'm using the LFO more like a step sequencer. So if you look in here, this is the pattern. So I'm just, I just edited the step sequencer like this to add in my own pattern. And that's what gives it the sound. So it sounds like this. So it's very bright on its own, but when you hear it with the rest of the song, I think it, it blends well, at least in my opinion. Uh, after that, I'm using uh, M Comp on M Turbo Comp on it, just to kind of even it out. Yeah, I feel that just kind of pushes it forward a little bit. And then I'm using M Auto Dynamic EQ, and that one, did I use? No, I didn't do anything special. I just used the high pass filter and then I cut a little bit in here just because I didn't want it to interfere with the guitar sound. I did another mix before this and I was like, ah, it's kind of hard to hear the guitar. So I cut it out here just to add more clarity to the guitar. Uh, from there, did I do anything else? Oh, M Dynamics. I think I had this side chained and uh, it's, yeah, side chain is from the drums, the bass drum. And, uh, yeah, let's see, max frequency. Ah, that's what I did. So, in here, in this case, I used all the drums together, so I couldn't really get the bass drum sound. So, the problem with that is, like, how, how do I separate the bass drum from the rest of the drum? So, all I did was, I took this max frequency, and I moved it all the way down to around 120. So, that way, it's only getting the bass drum. So, I'll play it, and let me just put this speaker mark here, so you can hear what that's actually being input it in the side chain. So it's not going crazy with the side chain, but I wanted to duck a little bit to make that bass uh, hit kind of stick out. And then I'm just going into the reverb there. And it sounds a little bit thin on its own, but I think with the other stuff, it, it sounds good. I'll go to the deep bass here, and I'll show you what I did here. This is actually a device that I kind of stopped working on. I wanted to make something that sounded kind of like that OVO deep bass, which I think it does do, but I don't, I don't know why I stopped using it uh, and stopped developing it. If you think this is good, let me know, and I'll keep working on it. But so far, this actually isn't an M Sound Factory. This is my own my own personal uh, <laughs> device. Uh, so this is just doing a really low super saw tile sound. Um, if you're familiar with the OVO bass, it's that basically. Uh, and here I have some distortion on it too. And uh, I have some filtering too. So it's not like a normal super saw. It's like a deep bass with some glide on it. So let's hear it. And then I'm doing the same thing with dynamics, and that's just the side chain. So that's why you're hearing like that pumping in there. And then auto dynamic EQ. What I did here was a little bit more unique. Uh, so I believe it's band one. What I have is a high pass filter, a 24 decibel per octave. And you see, like, why does this look green? And the reason is I set this from left side to mid side mode. And then on one, I set it to side. So that means that anything under, what is this, uh, 144 uh, hertz is being cut on the sides though. So the bass will be mono, but the sides won't. And then I just took this out. I forgot the reason. Maybe it's clashing with the bass drum or something. 
So that's all I'm doing. But I don't want the bass, the lowest notes or the lowest parts of the bass to be mono, but the upper parts where you're getting those harmonics and things, I do. So that's all I'm doing there. And I'll play the wobble bass and the deep bass together like this so you can hear them. So I think those two work together, and I tried to do the same thing with the reset, uh, reset, I don't know, reset, reset. I don't know how to pronounce that. Glissandos, uh, the risers, and the impact. So I wanted to make you know nice transitions between these different things using all three of those. So let's see. I'll just do the build up section, so you can hear it just with the reset glissando, the riser, and then the impact at the end, like this. So I think that's a good transition between different points, especially leading into the chorus. So this is basically what I did with the synths. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to do this was not only because I wanted to combine like guitar stuff with synth stuff, but so far in, in M Sound Factory, they don't have like a, a full set of devices. It does have a good amount though. So I want to see, can I make a whole song just using the devices in here? And actually there've been some more added since I actually finished this song. So there's some new stuff in here but for me i think it's actually enough i was happy with what i was able to get out of this uh you know with this song just using some of the devices in here the only one that i couldn't was the wobble pad i had to make something new for that but the rest of the stuff i just you know basically used presets uh, lots of them are stuff i made so of course it suits me but uh, hopefully this will give you an idea of what's actually in the devices for M Sound Factory and how you can use them in a song. I'll try to do more of these in the future as well as making more devices for M Sound Factory. But if you have any questions, leave those down below. If you like this, give me a thumbs up and check out all the other plugins at MelodyProduction.com. Until next time, see you.